So how to buy your first buy to let property. If you're interested at all in investing in property, uh, this is your Fast Start 101 guide. We've got seven steps to take you through from A to Z, one to seven on how to get started. Let's get into it. Yeah. <coughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Right then, so um, today, how to buy your first buy-to-let property. So I think this topic is, is really aimed at anyone who is seriously considering investing in buy-to-let for mm. the first time. But to be honest with you, if you've just started out on your, on your journey and you might have bought your first one already, I think this will still be relevant. If you think you might have made a few mistakes. Yeah, well, I'm sure, yeah. you know, a lot of people do make little mistakes along the way, but you know, even if you have just started, this will still be relevant for you. Yeah. Um, but these are the seven things that you need to know um, when setting out to buy your first Buy to let. It's a very good list then. Yeah, I if, I might, if I might say so, you've, you've come up with it. So, yeah. Team effort. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if we do plan these uh, episodes a bit more these days, um, just to make sure we're giving really bullet, good, bullet stuff, points really good content. Yeah, so good, um, good. the first one is understanding, sounds really, some of these are going to sound really obvious. Well, understanding how to make money from rental property. You're talking you know? about, yeah. yeah. So what I'm really talking about there is plan. Hmm. Create a business plan. You wouldn't start any other business without forming a business plan. And buy to let property is really unique in the fact you can just go and buy a house and stick a tenant in it. And you, you are can, a landlord. You'd, you'd even you get a mortgage tenant. without showing a business plan to the bank. Yep. You wouldn't go and get startup capital from a no. bank without a business plan. So, so to you, create you, one. You say this yeah. sounds obvious. It is something that I see landlords not do more often than not, maybe eight, I don't know, 80, 80, most, of the time. most of the time. You're right. Yeah. You, you can, and I see, and I, I spoke to a chap the other day, I got some money, it came from selling some yeah. shares or something. Yeah, or I inheritance I want, is a common I want yeah. to get into buy to let, that was a thing. I just want a little, little this, a little that, not really thought about exactly what it was. So I bought those three flats. Yeah. Why'd you do that then? Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll yeah. do, won't they? So, well, pay the wrong price, they won't rent out for that. You've got the service charge on that that's, yeah. that's, that's going to be No, you're not going to make the money you think you're going to make. You haven't just made the best of the capital you've got and put it into buy to let. And that's why you get landlords bemoaning the fact they're landlords and it doesn't work yeah. and whatever, 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 because they don't make any money because they've bought the yeah. wrong thing, the wrong area for the wrong price. Exactly. doesn't rent for the right amount. So know how buy to let mm. makes money. Yeah. Have a plan. Test it with a few people. Pick your phone up to you. I mean, yeah, yeah, you, no, you, I was going to say, we, we, we help um, landlords make um, landlord investment plans all the time. So that's the first one, really important. Um, the second one is funding it. So you're either going to get a buy to let mortgage um, or you're going to need to have a pot of cash if you're going to pursue a, you know, a more complicated strategy than just putting a deposit down on a house. Yeah. Um, so What's different about a buy-to-let mortgage than a regular residential mortgage? A few really key things. The main one being the house has to be in That's a lettable yeah. condition. The land, the sounds landlord, obvious. Sounds but obvious. Lots of people. Yeah. You can go and buy mm. a, a house that hasn't been touched for fifty years with a ten percent deposit, normal mortgage. Move in, live there. Live it yourself. You live there yourself. Never rent no, it out. Okay. That's a residential mortgage. They, yeah. the bank, are assuming they know you're gonna put a new kitchen in, do yeah. a load of you stuff don't, to you, you don't care, um, it's got an avocado no. bathroom suite, no, 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 and no, 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 yeah, no. you'll live with you, that you dodgy out, radiator, you'll do it later. Course. You can get a mortgage yeah. on that to live in, no yeah, problem at all. as long as it's not falling down, obviously. Yep. But, and then, but, but buy to let mortgage, they won't lend you on that because it's not lettable. You have to be able to move a tenant in the day they loan you the money. Um, so therefore, you're very restricted with a buy to let mortgage on the type of property you can get. If you're trying to buy a flat with a cladding issue, you won't get a mortgage on it. If you're trying to buy a house that hasn't got a work functioning kitchen, won't get a buy to let mortgage on it. So they're the houses that I was talking about where you need cash to buy it. Your plan is to renovate it and then you put the mortgage on it later. Yeah. Um, we talk about decision in principles and agreement in principles. Yeah, so I don't, you used to get a DIP. It's not quite the same. DIP, a decision, decision in principle. In principle. I now see AIP, agreement in principle. Yeah. Yeah. That comes through quite often. That, all that really is, is just them saying, 
on the basis of what you've told me, we'll be happy to loan you some money on this. Yeah. And then it, you go out and find the house, actually. Personally, I always think it's important to know that you, if you're going to buy something in cash or you're going to offer to buy something with a mortgage, I'd like to, and this is why you put it at number two, I'd like to have spoken to a mortgage broker and said, mm. can I get a mortgage, can I personally get a mortgage on this specific property? So we're taking a look at me, we're taking a look at the property, Will it all work? Will it all stack? Oh, that's a They'll great shout, some you know, stuff because uh, if you're buying a limited company, they might be more fussy mm -hmm. on if there is a, a pub or a restaurant across that the road. kind of stuff, yeah. If there's a fast food uh, yeah. outlet next door, you'll probably um, yep. reject it. Um, so yeah, it's a really good idea. They'll come up with get the, say, an oh, idea from a broker. Has it got the right amount of years mm. left on the lease? Or yeah. um, has like, it got an absentee freehold? Has it got, um, yeah, yeah all, all Is it gonna have things? the right rent? All those yeah. things, they will. The mortgage broker will look at it and, and they will point out if you can't get a mortgage yeah. on it. Now, an agreement in principle, it's not a guarantee, and it's probably six months, a year away. If you're buying in cash, of course, mm -hmm. if it's an agreement in principle, and then you go and offer on a property, you might get rejected and go and offer another property. But it does, it gives you the peace of mind Definitely. that you've thought about and you've been through that process of. Is this mortgageable before you actually come to need it mm. in anger? Because otherwise, that's too late, isn't it? If you've already bought it in cash and you can't refinance yes. out, and your cash is stuck, or not quite as bad, but you're in front of an estate agent, you made an offer, you're going through, and now you can't get a mortgage. Estate agents are actually quite used to that falling through, but it's not, it's a waste of everybody's time, including yours. So, yeah, mortgage broker, mm -hmm. get a decision in principle. There's mortgage broker, principle. you need a specialist one as well, buy to let mortgage broker, mm -hmm. not just someone who dabbles in mortgages. Um, Wherever you're uh, engaging with us on this topic today, there'll be a link in the bio to book a call with me and I can make that introduction for you to a really good specialist buy to let broker. Um, okay, so the third thing is the taxes. You, you pay tax, basically. Um, so therefore, you need, again, to have spoken to a property accountant, a proper specialist, a property accountant. Interesting you put this at number three not number seven, mm. which is the way, oh, let, let, let's do everything cool. and then let's think about the taxes later, which yeah, you know, if, you look, yeah. if you think of a profit and loss sheet, tax comes at the bottom. But in these days, you know, since section 24 tax, you need to have your plan sorted out at the yep. top because if you buy in your personal name, it might, might, might be okay. You know, if you're buying without mortgages. Well, we haven't even really it. got to one of these points is buying the house. Buying the house, We haven't yeah. got there yet yeah. because the accountant might say, yeah. oh, right, you're a business owner, are you? Oh, okay. There's some really cool stuff we can do there. Yeah. We can we can release loads of cap. Did you know you could do X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Get, um, it, get it set yeah. up beforehand. Definitely. You can get everything, you know, one to six, right? And if we'd have put tax at the bottom, have a nasty shock at the end, mm. putting it at number three it means that everything you buy, don't forget you're going to spend a lot of time, effort, money. You know, if, you, if you're serious about this and you're serious about growing a property portfolio, you will be investing what could amount to your life savings, the money yeah. that's going to save you in or look after you in re retirement. Um, don't, don't build it on shaky foundations, mm. good, a good yeah, accountant company, be, accountant set up. Get that if you're going to go down that route that the, a good accountant will it's going to help you save money. You might mm. help you save money on stamp duty. If the house needs a lot of work doing to it, it yep. you know, might, you might have, you have to pay stamp duty. Again, there'll be a link in the bio, book a call with me, we can introduce you to a specialist accountant. Um, number four, really important, this one. Mm. Um, these are all the things you need to know, right? When you're getting involved in buy step property, you need to know your responsibilities as a landlord. You're going to own this thing, put a tenant in it, and then you're going to have a whole heap of responsibilities now, mm. you're a landlord. Mm. There's a um, lot of things coming before buying your first property. Yeah. I'm noticing this. Yeah, this is all absolutely essential And if I'm putting you off, then maybe stuff. it's a good job you're watching it. Because you know, we've, we've yeah. thought about this video. This, this could yeah. be the things like, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, do this, do this, do this. Do I really want to do this? Some people do you, yeah. go through this and work out, I don't want to be a landlord. You're about to become your yeah. own. You might be thinking, yeah. I'll pop a tenant in there. They'll pay me the rent. And, uh, it's all easy. I might just arrange an annual gas certificate. Yep. You're about to become your own letting agent. Mm. So ask yourself, are you capable of doing everything a letting agent does? A few things we've written down here. Time, um, time is a big one. Yeah. Are you, Availability. Have you got access to the most up-to-date tenancy agreement? Um, do you understand about deposit protection, right to rent checks, EPC ratings, renters' rights, the how to rent guide? 
Um, Our housing, health and safety yeah. rating system. Yeah. That one. And the other 178 pieces of legislation that yeah. go into becoming armed. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of responsibilities. It might sound scary. Most of them are all really common sense stuff. Um, and you will probably find you were more or less there anyway. But just failing on one of those things yep. can get you in a, a, in a, a spot of other. Are you either, maybe you can't collect rent, maybe you can't evict a tenant, uh, maybe you get a fine. Yeah. Worst case now you could go to prison. Don't no, no, nobody became a landlord to potentially no. go to prison. So let's not do that. Um, I th I'm I'm spotting a theme here, which is get a plan, speak to a mortgage broker, speak to an accountant. This fourth one, mm. also, I think it's get get a letting agent. Yeah, yeah get yeah. a letting agent. Unless you can be guaranteed that you are cast iron, you're going to do this properly, and you can do. You've got the time, you've got the skill, mm. inclination. Can you be bothered? Uh, to yeah. do this job properly, get a letting agent. So uh, there's a link somewhere you can get. We can yeah. be your letting agent. We can, we can. be your letting agent. Yeah. We certainly can. Yeah. Um, number six again. Uh, we've not even got to buying the house yet. But number six is um, knowing is it, all the it, things that you can insure yourself against. Just um, I, I'm just going to pick you up really quickly. That's number yeah. five. But yeah, it's all right. Number five. <laughs> we, we know where we are. We know where we are. That is number, number five. five. Yeah. Uh, no, seven. Uh, number five. So it sounds obvious, mm. um, but there are. A few things a lot of people don't realise. Um, if you're buying a house with a mortgage, during the, the purchasing process, the solicitor will tell you at some point, you need to get um, insurance. insurance on this house or they won't complete on the mortgage. Yeah. So you'd get it anyway. However, you can insure against a lot of other things that are the scary things that actually put a lot of people off investing in the first place. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you can insure against the tenant not paying your rent and the legal fees that would go along with evicting them. Rent and legal insurance. Yeah. We offer that to all of our landlords. You can insure against malicious damage from the tenant. Yeah. The two, that's the two biggest fears yeah. a landlord yeah. has not covered. Getting, yeah. Not getting paid, tenant house getting so trashed. So you can insure against Straight away, both. You've in, you can insure against both of yeah. them. Uh, you can... Insure, insure the building yeah. itself. In, there's different levels of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you can insure against the boiler. Yeah, yeah. Boiler breakdown. Other things. Yeah. If, if you've put... Um, white goods in, yeah. which we don't actually advise. There's basically, you can insure, insure against yeah. everything. Um, I, I go back a step. When you're buying it and the solicitor says, you're going to have to have uh, insurance on this property in order to complete, um, if you've got a mortgage. If you haven't got a mortgage, they won't ask you that question. That's so you've got to true. remember. Yeah, the estate I, agent aren't going to tell you that. No, uh, I have bought houses and uh, forgotten to put insurance on for a couple of days. That's happened, yeah. definitely. Yeah, easy. Uh, and the other thing is, if you're going to be doing a renovation, don't just get normal mm. buy to let insurance. It doesn't cover you. If you, have, you haven't got a tenant, it's unoccupied for over 30 days, and you've got builders in there doing work, you need a special renovation policy. Yeah. And you, it, it, um, you've got to buy the whole year, it's more expensive, and then when you cancel it, you get a rebate. That's the you way do. it works. There's no you other do. way to do it. I don't know if anybody in your team, your solicitor wouldn't know that, your mortgage no, broker wouldn't know it. Quite often. Not, you've got to think, think of that one yourself. We know, so, we know that. We'd, we'd remind you if we've we, got if a, we has. Yeah. We've got a brilliant insurance broker um, that can uh, understand all of those things. There's, there's one other thing that I wrote down about mm. insurance. Um, it's the cost of it, the price of it. And when you speak to landlords, they're paying wildly different prices. Uh, I remember the time, it, was, it, it took a year to do it, but I saved nearly a the, no, so nearly half a third. It was over a third of the cost of my insurance by bringing things onto one renewal date. So okay. I, spoke to, I spoke to a mortgage broker. I, I got nearly 200 houses at that point, and mortgage broker came in, looked at all the renewal dates, set me up one policy, a group portfolio policy, and of course, only the ones that are up for renewal can go onto the policy at that point. And then every time something renewed, they came onto the new policy, new policy for that first year. It, well, there was no saving at all. It was actually probably quite a lot of hassle and um, cost a little bit more money. But now, every time I renew, I'm renewing every property all at once, mm. and it's massive. That's cheaper. cool. I think it's hugely cheaper. So if you're starting from scratch, you've got the opportunity of getting the portfolio and adding as you go, rather than having to do that year that I did. But yeah, I, I, you know, when you speak to landlords now and say, I'm paying you know, um, 40 quid a month for my insurance, it's like, mm, you should be paying that nine ten pounds a unit if that so um yeah insurance can be a lot cheaper if you get yourself organized fantastic mm -hmm. okay number six mm. is 
sourcing the property. And you think this is what the video would be about, hey? Yeah. How to buy my first house. Mm. And it's not, you've got to get those you thought one of all these things so that you don't have to, right? One, but one to five, five yeah. is critically important. Don't just yeah. go out there and walk and buy a house. And then think about, well, it, later. Yeah, think so, about it later. And I'm talking about property sourcing, not buying a house. There's two different things. So you, you, anyone can just go on Rightmove and <clears throat> find something, think it looks all right, buy it. Mm. But you want to buy the right thing, the right house, the right street, know that you're going to get the right type of tenant, um, the right rent levels that will match your expectations on your return. Um, and actually being able to achieve all of that isn't that easy. It requires a lot of effort and time. Mm. So make sure you've got the time, if you're going to be doing this yourself, to source the right property, right? Yeah, I think, um, like I went, I'll go all the way back to the example, the, the, the person that didn't have a plan and just bought basically the first three flats that looked like mm. they were, I don't, know, I, I, I don't know what the criteria was, but I suspect it was ease. There they are, in fact, I know it was, they, there are the flats. I, somebody is, I, this happens as well. Um, I, 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 a mate of mine selling these flats a while behind them. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, like what well, that, that's the criteria because they're there available. No, you know, just yeah. I, I saw these flats, so I, I saw this house, so I bought that one because I liked it. It's like, no, 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 get your plan, and the plan says I need this return, I'm going to spend this much money on it, and it's, it's all going to mm. work. There's the numbers. I've set myself up with a mortgage, I've got my accountant sorted out, I've understood what it's going to take when I actually get it. I've got maybe I've got a, a letting agency who on the, the day it's ready to mortgage is lined up to go. Now I need to fulfill the order. So just mm. buying a house is easy. Sourcing to meet your plan is what you're talking about. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things to talk about there is, um, can you invest locally? Like, Good I don't point. know, you know yeah, yeah. where are you? And does your ideal plan work within a 10 mile radius of your house or does it not? If it doesn't meet <clears> your plan, then you're gonna to have to go somewhere else. You're yeah, gonna to have to you're travel. Gonna, you're gonna to need someone to find out. How that far are you gonna have to? Don't limit yourself, yeah. you know. Where are the UK's actually, number one hot, uh, the UK's by flat hotspots? Where are they? Yeah, uh, I actually think even finding a house in the area that you live is really hard because I know how hard my property sourcing team have to work to find houses in their patch for our clients. Mm. Um, and they do it they do it full time. They yeah. literally are full time property sourcing and renovation managers. Yeah. So um, make sure that if you're setting out to do this, you have got the time each day to be available to estate agents to be able to view stuff quickly. Because if you think you found something on a Monday that might be worth a view, by Saturday it won't be available. If, if, and if, if you think in your view at the weekend, you're having a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely um, the good stuff mm. would have gone in a couple of days. So yeah, you've got to be sourcing rather than just buying so actually going out there actively looking yeah. to find the thing that you want rather than just looking in an estate agent's window or a True. right move and going oh that'll do that looks like it'll do no, no think about it a lot more than that also if um if the house you're trying to source clearly needs some money spending on it little or large you need to know exactly how much money needs spending on it to be able to work out how much you can afford to pay for the house yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we could do an hour and a half, two hour long video just about property sourcing alone. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, do you want to a little plug? Because we, we said, you know, we can, there'll be a link in all sorts to put you in touch with all sorts to, to help you out mm -hmm. here. I think get a property sourcer is an option. Yeah. Feel free to do it yourself. You know, if you, could, if you can do this yourself, go find the house. And um, yeah, there's a load of things you need to think about on that. And like you say, it's, 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 a, it's a separate video, but yeah. Um, if you want help, yeah, we can Adam help. can help you. Yeah, you've well, got, got a team, sourcing teams. Teams of people in, in all the, what we deem the major buy-to-let hotspots of England. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got capable teams who've done hundreds and hundreds of properties who can source, renovate, and then hand over for long-term management. Um, yeah, book a call, follow the link in the bio wherever you're engaging with us, and we can talk to you a bit more detail. It's about. nice to have somebody to hold your hand there as well, because yeah. it's, uh, you know, you can, Adam charges a fee, of course he charges yeah, fees, yeah. we're an agent and that's what we do, but um, I've never seen a situation where your fee isn't covered by savings. You either bought the house cheaper or during a renovation, if there's a renovation yeah, you've needed, quicker and, you, you've got yeah. it done quicker and saved some money. So yeah. don't be scared about getting advice. Talking's always free. You know, Pick up the phone, talk to Adam, that's yeah. always free. But actually engage, there's a hesitance. Nobody likes paying, paying professional fees. Um, in fact, the smaller the business, 
the less likely they want to pay professional fees. They're yeah. just abhorrent to them. But a bigger business starts to pay professional fees, get other people involved. Things happen mm. better where you get Definitely. good advice and it should save you money. If it yeah. doesn't feel like it's saving you money, you don't have to go ahead, do yeah, you? But a good, a good would, property would source. Like uh, um, yeah. well, we have that local knowledge as well. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, get the house cheaper and get it, um, get it renovated. Yeah. So quicker. you've done all of that. Yeah. Now, number seven, again, sounds obvious, but it's managing the property long term. Um, it's not as straightforward as just the rent drops in yeah. your account every month. I put, I, a tenant I put a note here, whatever you do, don't, don't buy yourself or build, build a job. Don't, no. buy, don't buy a house and buy, buy a job, because no. you can easily. There's a lot of things to do. If you're going to do it yourself, then make sure you're as qualified as a letting agent yeah. And there's a lot of things all to do. the people that work inside a letting agent um, make sure that you're available 247 365 yeah I, I think our, our point four was get a letting agent I think this is similar get a, hopefully you've already yeah. got a letting agent the other thing well, I point four was, was your responsibilities. responsibilities all the yeah. responsibilities that a letting agent yeah. look after you for now we're talking about managing, managing the it, actual yeah. asset yeah. Um, it's you know there's more the, to it there's the other thing that I wrote down here was um, the Again, it comes down to cost, the cost of an agent. DIY versus that. I, I genuinely believe that a proper agent will um, have the rent at the market level, mm -hmm. they'll keep the voids tight, mm -hmm. they'll keep your maintenance bills lower than you can get them, um, they'll put the rent up regularly at market rent, all those things that, uh, they'll, they'll, if it's us, we'll help you with mortgage yeah. cost. Not, we're not mortgage broker, but we'll, we'll have that planning session where it says, speak to this accountant, speak to this mortgage broker, generally keeping things tight and, and our fees should be less than what we make or save. But that's that's just, a you know, you might believe that, might not believe that, who know until you are our client, but that, I, I, I know that's true. Um, but the thing that I know is true for any um, landlord is if you start to do too much yourself, you won't scale. The biggest thing you can do to affect all of this is buy another house. Once you've got everything right, and you've got one mm. house and it's all looking, you know, I'm very, very happy. If you're unhappy with one house, you'll never want to buy two. But, but once you've got one that you're happy with, how do you increase your returns? Well, you can't. Every, you've got the market rent, everything's, you know, you're running a tight ship. All you can do is buy another house. But that doubles the income and the profit. If you bought a mirror image, exactly the same house, of course, it could be slightly different, but, you know, buying the next house if you don't get this bit right if you buy yourself a job you won't scale it no, holds landlords definitely back there's a reason that most landlords in the uk only own a couple of houses yeah. they've not set themselves up for you know a, a good a good experience where they've got the one or they're the doing two. it all wrong and they're grumpy and they're grumpy. yeah exactly and they're not, they're not scaling because of it so. all right that's it then the so there you go. that's all you need to know about stepping into the world of buy to let i think there might be a, a little bit more but i think it's a good starter um you probably watch this video as an aspiring landlord, um, listen to this, watch as, as an aspiring landlord, and you sort of, a lot, lots of landlords in your position will feel a bit, a bit overwhelmed. Um, don't worry, you don't have to do it all alone. Pick up the phone, it's always free to talk, we love to talk, and um, yeah, give you whatever advice and help and signpost you to the right people. Um, yeah. I, think, I think we've covered what we need to cover today. Please like and subscribe, and share it. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.